it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilbur. Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited to be with you today. I have got a great episode in store for you, and it was one that, you know, I got to witness in person over this past fall of 2023. I actually happened to be a parent of a football player on the Fayetteville High School football team, and you know, my son kind of came to the sport late in life. But if there's one thing that I have learned that because I played football growing up was that it, football is truly a team sport. And I got to witness a team really come together and gel like never before. And that would be the Fayetteville High School Bulldogs or Purple Dogs, as they're affectionately known. And every team that they came up against in that that storied season of 13 and 0, they met with the same fate. They all lost. And it started with Cabot. <laughs> It went through North Little Rock. It went to Northside, Bentonville West, Rogers, Southside, Bentonville, Springdale, Rogers Heritage, Harbor, Southside, Conway, and Bentonville again for the final championship game where the Bulldogs won 22-16 to at War Memorial Coliseum down in Little Rock. And I got to witness that firsthand. And I mean, there's nothing like winning a championship, but my next guest certainly knows that feeling. And he also knows what it takes to corral a bunch of testosterone laden youth to come together to focus on one goal. And that that guest would be Coach Casey Dick, who is the coach of the Fayetteville High School Bulldogs. Coach Dick, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. I appreciate you guys for having me. Um, You know, truly, truly an honor to be here, you know, and serve our school and our community. Um, Just look forward to it every single day. Absolutely. Well, no, I thank you as well. And, And, you know, I'll talk about this a little more down the road, but I think that There's one thing that I think a lot of people miss when it comes to organized sports, but especially football, is that the the requirement of camaraderie and, you know, next man up mentality that a football team espouses, right? And everybody relies on everybody else to bring their A game at all times. Otherwise, you can't achieve what you guys achieved over this past season. But I'll get into that. I would love for you just to, for the uninitiated, for those that may not know Casey Dick, maybe beyond some of your your background or your past with the University of Arkansas, I'd love for you just to share your superhero origin story with our audience, and then we'll get into this storied uh, football season in a second. Yeah, for sure. You know, as we kind of mentioned off the air before we got here, you know, I was originally born in Wichita Falls, Texas when I was when I was four years old. I, I moved to Allen, which Allen, Texas, as at, at that time was not anything like it was as people know it now, from a 65 to $70 million football stadium there, I lived down a dirt road. I mean, now there's numerous elementary schools and even high schools in Lovejoy ISD now from where I lived. So it's essentially from kindergarten through sixth grade, I attended Lovejoy ISD, which wasn't at that time an independent school district that once you got past sixth grade, they consolidated with Allen because they didn't have a middle school and they didn't have a high school. So once I got past sixth grade, I transfer, transferred in to Allen because that's obviously what we had to do, you know, and then from seventh grade on, I, you know, went through the Allen school district and and had a great time, had a great career, you know, had a great, as most people do that get into this profession, they have great high school coaches. And I had, I had two to probably two to three, really, you could even say five mentors at that time that were at Allen. One of them now runs the Texas high school coaches association and Joe Martin, who was a big mentor of mine. He was the head coach. And then my position coach who, Essentially was, was pretty much like a second dad to me. His name was Brian Polk, you know, st- currently works for the Texas High School Coaches Association now. And when I got done playing college ball and doing all that, I went down to Texas and worked for him at Byron Nelson High School, which was just about three miles west of South Lake. I'm just kind of put some geographical locations on that. And really just that's really where I cut my teeth, learned, you know, the ins and outs of the coaching profession as a young guy. I really learned how to do it the right way. And then my wife being from up here, she's originally from West Fork, the small town, just before you get into Fayetteville, you know, had, had an opportunity to get back up here I and mean, really just never look back from the relationships that we've built, the ones that we already had that were established. But obviously, you know, been been super blessed over the last five years to be in Fayetteville with, with just an outstanding community and support system that we have here. 
and just had an unbelievable time here and doing what we love. Obviously, number one, we get to we get to coach your guys as kids. And that's what we tell the parents all the time. They're one like we thank the parents because the job that that they have to do to get them to us to, to you know, to transport them back and forth at the insane times that we require our kids to get up here and do our job. But, you know, secondly, we, we absolutely love every one of those kids that walk through the door and currently right Going into this year will be the biggest team nine through twelve we've had, which will roughly be around two hundred and thirty kids nine through twelve. So you know it's growing, which is a great thing, just because of the number of kids that we get to impact on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, you know, wow. I mean, that's there's a, you unpacked a lot there. Uh, so there's two things that I want to ask you specifically. Growing up, did you envision that you would be where you are today as a football coach? I mean, obviously you were playing football. I'm assuming you probably started out Pop Warner age. And worked your way mm-hmm. up, but did you? At what point did you, did it kind of click that you were like, you know what, I could actually do this. This is something that I really enjoy doing on a regular basis. You know, honestly, when I was when I was in ninth grade, that that position coach I had, Brian Polk, he was a very young guy at the time. He had just graduated college from Harding in Searcy. You know, he was at a school right before he got to us, Garland High School, that had just won a state championship in nineteen ninety nine. And so, you know, the energy, the charisma and everything that, you know, he approached his, you know, the daily routine of coaching football and being a part of. I just always saw him was like, man, this guy's never in a bad mood. He looks like he loves what he does on a daily basis, you know, and he gets to play football. So that, you know, or coach football, excuse me. So that was at that young age, I really realized, okay, like I really need to focus on number one, like what's going to make me happy and do this for a long time because and I love the game of football. I love impacting kids. Um, I think there's a lot of people here that would say. You know, I, I love football. But I love kids. I love the youth. I love watching them taking a kid that maybe has had a trouble past. And really, when he leaves our program, it's like a boom. Well, he's kind of changed and kind of came into his own from some of the things that we put into place in order to, you know, just get kids to try to succeed. So and I knew I wanted to coach probably when I was in 10th grade. I, that was something I wanted to do. I'd always been I've been oftentimes motiv- motivated by kind of what's next. You know, so I started early on my career as far as in, in an offensive, not an offensive coordinator, but a position coach and then went to, you know, offensive coordinator, then, then became a head coach at a age that obviously I was probably too young to be a head coach at Van Buren. I think I was 31 or two years old at the time in the state of Arkansas. So that was a learning curve there. I certainly wouldn't recommend it. There's a lot of things learned the hard way, if you will. But, you know, just just been motivated by that. I wanted to learn, succeed at a very high rate. You know, in the last couple of years, you know, three or four years here, we've been able to, to, you know, take a group of kids with a group of coaches and really bring them all together. And I think what you've seen is is that end product for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I think about this and it, uh, again, there is so much here in terms of, you know, what young people go through as they're maturing and matriculating through high school. And they're constantly dealing with so many different warring thoughts and emotions. And as a mm-hmm. football coach, you have to kind of rein them in, you know, and, and get control of them. So I don't think it's an easy job by any stretch of imagination because you have to be part, you have to be part dad, part coach, part therapist. I mean, you, you, you've got to fill all those roles. There's a lot of different titles that we give ourselves. You know, it's very, we talk about relationship with our position coaches a lot. You know, it's one of the things that I'm really, really big on is, you know, our position coaches, I believe have the best relationships with our kids in the entire state. I really, I really believe that from you know, a day in a day out basis of really getting to know their kids, you know, and then, you know, obviously overseeing, you know, 200 kids that walk through the door, you know, we talk a lot about, this is going to sound weird, but we talk a lot about being like Walmart, you know, everybody always has to go back to Walmart. They want to go back to, they get to go back to Walmart. And so when our kids walk in here, we, you know, we want it to be the best part of their day every day that they walk in here. So if that means we've got to obviously dig a little deep and get our kids to continue to want to come back, then we'll do whatever we have to. And I think that's shown, obviously, from the number of kids that we have that want to play, that have continued to play, and then obviously some of the success that we've had in the past. Yeah. Well, I know I'm speaking just from from my experience with my son, because I would always grill him. I was a I was a college athlete, so I get that the amount of work that goes into it. And, you know, I mean, you guys unearthed a gym rat that I didn't even know I had, because he literally does not want to miss a practice. He does not want to miss the weight room. He does not want to miss anything to do with football. And he's only been in it for a couple of years. I, I guess we kind of wish he had, we had had the chance to take him all the way through from early stages, but it is what it is. But that speaks volumes to, I think, what you guys are doing on a daily basis, that you would instill that kind of love. And even somebody that's newer to the game Versus, you know, a kid that's been doing it since he was like in fifth grade. Yeah, you know, and sports are weird. You know, you get a kid that maybe necessarily hadn't played that, 
and he joins your program and he ends up having, you know, so many people see a role within a football team as what happens on a Friday night. And there's so many other roles in a football team that happen every day, every minute, every hour, other than that brief snapshot of, okay, when there's 5,000 people at a game on a Friday night, everybody's like, well, you know, this kid is that, or this coach is that. And it, and it is, it is so much more, you know, on a, a about an 18 hour day for us, if you will, from, you know, making sure, you know, did so-and-so eat? Did so-and-so sleep? Did they get up and go to a meeting? Did they get up and go to school? Did they eat lunch? Were they able to do this? You know, did their girlfriend break up with them? And how are we going to combat these things? But, you know, what I kind of hit on in the future was when they come in as a sophomore or junior to watch them grow and develop, that is the most rewarding thing that we can do. They don't even, they don't have to play. Like there are kids in this program that just because of the sheer number, obviously we can't play obvious all 150 kids that are on the varsity in a football game. But there's so many other roles from watching them grow, watching them develop, watching them become a leader, watching them get out of their shell, you know, and do certain things that people say, well, he, he'll never do that. By the time he leaves here, he's doing that, you know, four or five times a week, going and talking to people, going to elementary schools, reading to kindergartners, and, you know, being a part of our leadership class. There's there's so many different roles that, yeah, we, we realize, that, you know, football is a very short, minute time period of life. But the things that football and athletics and sports and all the extracurriculars, you know, those things teach you are going to help you so far in life that that's what we want. That's what we want to get accomplished. And I tell people all the time, they ask me, how do you judge success? And we don't, it's nice to win. Everybody, you know, everybody wants to look at a coach like, oh, well, you know, he's winning. Well, that's, we don't judge success by that. We judge success based on how many kids come back after they graduate. And that's why I tell our coaches all the time, like when it's homecoming, you know, there, the last two years, there's been 35 or 40 kids every homecoming year that have come back that are in our locker room, that are in our weight room, you know, before the game, pregame speeches, doing this, doing that. And it is, it is, that's how we judge success because when a kid comes back after he graduates and tells you, man, this was the best time of my life. That's important to us. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see them on the sidelines there when they come on a Friday night to come support you guys and see what you're doing. I, I think that is certainly a testament to the type of program that Fayetteville offers for football, for sure. But, you know, just in general, I mean, Fayetteville seems to be a, a titan in sports. It's the second largest city in the state of Arkansas. Population wise, it's there's a lot happening here. And so it's not surprising that you have to deal with the numbers that you have to deal with of kids that want to go through the football program. And so I certainly salute everything that you guys are doing with that. So, you know, I do want to back up for a second because I, I would love for you just to maybe share one or two things about your time at the U of A, because a lot of people don't, may or may not know this. I mean, of course, I'm not from here and people know that, that listen to this podcast, mm -hmm. but I've been here almost 10 years now. So I feel like I'm a local, but, and I remember you when I didn't live here, but I watched ESPN and I would see Arkansas on, yeah. on, the, on the thing. And I was a big fan of, I was a huge fan of, of coach Nolan Richardson. And I was, I really rooted for the team. I don't know why I did. I just liked that 40 minutes of sheer terror that he put out there on the basketball Absolutely. court. But, but you, you were th a three-year starter at the U of A, if I'm correct, and you were a three-year mm -hmm. letterman at the U of A as quarterback. And I was watching a bunch of your highlights. And I mean, you could throw the rock. I mean, you, you definitely were, you didn't have any challenges as far as that's concerned. What was, no. what was your, I mean, what was your biggest experience, you know, coming out of high school, going to the U of A? What was that, what was that whole experience like? You know, it was, it was at the time, you know, you really don't kind of you don't I don't think people in the moment or at least I didn't. It's, and it's one of the things I've, I've tried to get better at as of it's, it's weird to say, but as I've gotten older and I even I even told my wife this year, I mean, I'll kind of come back to that in a second. But I, di I didn't think I did a, a good job of really soaking, you know, a lot of those things in, you know, you t I take a lot of the I took a lot of those things for granted. I think, you know, b being able to play at the University of Arkansas with the coaches and the kid, you know, the, the players that we did, but really just being able to like. How many people would really want to be in your shoes at any given time and moment? I think that that was big for me. When I look back on it, there's a lot of great memories. You know, you said I could throw the rock. I didn't have to be very good at throwing the ball because I had three really good guys to turn around and hand the ball off to and about three or four All-American offensive linemen up front that did an unbelievable job that made us really good. I just had to be the guy that didn't screw it up between <laughs> the center and the running back. Right. So there, there's, there's lots of great memories there, you know, from that standpoint. And there's a lot of I would say life lessons, obviously, in there. And, you know, from it, people always ask me, well, what did you learn from Coach Nutt through like your four years? And then when you had Coach Retrain on, you know, Coach Nutt was a very relationship driven coach that used, you know, fortified relationships that he established all the way through, 
you know, from when you came into this program to when you left, I still talk to him probably once every other week. I can call him at midnight and he'll answer the phone. So really, really awesome guy to have in your corner. And then Coach Retrino, you know, he's very business-like, but the amount of football, the amount of knowledge and the amount, you know, of, I'd say pressure or, you know, ways that he pushed you to develop was off the chart because he always demanded you do your best at every single thing that you do. So, you know, you try to take those two things, you know, really that you, those guys that you played for and everybody in between, because you look, you look at, the, you know, I had David Wickey as an offensive coordinator my freshman year. I had Gus Miles on my sophomore year and Alex Wood and, and coach, you know, coach Nutt. And then I had coach Retrino and coach, coach McGee my senior year. So there's a whole lot of unbelievable knowledge and life lessons that those guys have wrapped up that you're still able to kind of pick their brain on. So a lot of life lessons. And, you know, I mentioned earlier being able to t- soak things in. And I think two years ago when we played in the state championship game, that whole week and really that whole time leading up to the playoffs, the semif- I did a terrible job of really like enjoying the moment with the kids and understanding, okay, like number one, how lucky it is that, that this group made it this far, you know, to the state championship. And then number two, like this is fun for them. Like we've got to, we got to find a way, number one, again, to make it fun for them. That's the way kids nowadays obviously want to approach and have fun and have memories, but I've got to do a much better job of being present with them and not worried about, okay, well, who, you know, it's important, but who's going to feed our kids next or who's going to do that? Like we got to get our kids ready to go. And that was, that was something I thought I did a lot better job this year was really enjoying, you know, I guess the word that everybody's going to say leading up to this is the process that it took to get to Little Rock. And, you know, there was a lot of, uh, as we talked to our kids, there's a lot of progress made within the process in order to achieve some things. And, um, you know, that was just one thing I thought we did as a staff and I did personally a better job of. Yeah. Well, I mean, you live and you learn, right? I mean, so you go through that and you got as close as you could get to winning that championship just a couple of years ago. And then you finally crossed over the threshold. And actually remember, I asked my son, I said, you know, I was curious to know what was, I always asked him what, you know, what did the coach say? Or when, when coach Dick would uh, talk with everybody, what was, what was his message? And I remember him saying to me that uh, along the lines of, especially for the championship game was to savor the moment, to really remember this because it's not always guaranteed. And I mean, we see it in every, at every level of sports. It's, I mean, you see it in the Super Bowl. It's, it's hard to get to, to that final game and Absolutely. everything has to literally go correct for it to work out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a play here or a play there, a fumble here for any, anything can change the dynamic of a game and the outcome in an instant. Absolutely. And, and people forget, number one, winning is hard. Yes. You know, everybody, you know, you, you, you win and people are like, oh, they expect you to win, but w- winning is tough. You know, there, there's, a, especially today with, all the extracurriculars and, you know, the social media and all those things that we didn't have when we were growing up and they've got to combat on a daily basis. There's a lot more distractions on a daily basis, you know, to get kids to a certain point, to get them to go perform. And, and to be honest, we talked to them a lot about ignoring the scoreboard. Like we don't, we like, don't, don't worry about the scoreboard. The scoreboard is not going to define us. It's not going to define our program. It is nice when the scoreboard goes in our favor. Yes, because it means we did things the right way. We prepared the right way. We got, we, we got there the right way, but ultimately, you know, it's not going to define who we are when we're done playing or what we're going to do. There's lots of other things that we'll do. We just want to make sure we do it the right way. Yeah. And you know, the other thing too, is, is as you, you know, as I, as I looked at the box scores for all of these games and I mean, one game you won by 56 points, I think, which, which is the most, the highest margin of winning. And then another game, the, the Conway game was only three points. So, I mean, it, it just shows you, winning comes in all shapes and sizes and styles. And so certainly you guys were able to display that this year going into the season. Was this your expectancy? I mean, I know everybody says, yeah, we expect to go all the way, but did you feel like this could be that team that we could do something special? You know, I think when you look back at our kids and I'll tell everybody what's when you have some, the returning starters that we have, you know, you know, I always use the phrase, you have an opportunity, you know, if and then what happens with that opportunity? If you take advantage of that opportunity, then obviously you have an you have a chance to go be a great football team. And so they did things the right way. The, the, I, and you heard me talk at some of our banquets and things like that. Our this was a very self determined and self motivated group. You know, it, it was more of all right, coach, like point us in a direction this week. Kind of give us what we need to get. You know, in order to go be successful, whether it's on and off the field, and then just like get out of our way. Like we'll go figure it out. We had some really, 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 really good leaders. And that's something that, 
that we talk about a lot in our program. And one of the things that I think Coach Davis, our defense coordinator, does an unbelievable job in the entire state is, you know, our, one of our first or second years here, we, you know, identified the need of people talk about what is a leader, but nobody really shows kids what that is and what it looks like. So we sat down and, or he sat down and kind of, we kind of met with kind of brainstorming some ideas. And then he took the whole thing and really developed a curriculum for a leadership class on, you know, what, what does leading look like? What are some of the things that you're going to have to do in order to go be successful? What, what are some of the things you're going to have to do to hold people accountable? What does holding people accountable look like? Is there fear? Is, is being a leader lonely? So a lot of those, a lot of those topics that kids, you know, get talked to or, or, or say, you know, go be a leader, but they, what does that mean? So they go through about a 12 week, actually a 12 week class and they meet every Tuesday morning for an hour on different lessons. Some of them may be Nick Saban. There's tons of lessons that we love in the movie, The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, that, that you know, my, Michael was the ultimate leader and understood what it was. And the same thing with Kobe Bryant and, you know, just some of the guys that they can relate to or really turn it over into, okay, when I go back in the locker room, what's this going to look like? And so I think it's one of the areas that our team has really grown on over the last three or four years and just love the idea of the class and what it's really meant to our team. Yeah, no, I I think it's, it's, it is great. And it just reminded me of how powerful, you know, organized sports is, especially team sports like football and especially, you know, like a program of Fayetteville and, you know, of course, Springdale, Harbor, Rogers, Bentonville, Bentonville West, they're all experiencing a, a, some similar a heritage. They all have, you know, individuals, they have their own version of Casey Dick and others that are kind of kind of coaching these kids up and helping them to be the best that they can be. Of course, we think Fayetteville is the most special place, <laughs> but I digress. I just think it's really honorable what you guys are doing. And, and I really appreciate the hard work and time and effort that goes into it. I will say this, and, and this was something that I saw, you mentioned it earlier. You talked about the selfless nature of the parents that supported all of the players, which I was kind of blown away by. I mean, we got to experience it a little bit last year, but this year, I mean, there were, there were a lot of donations made. There were a lot of programs. I had no idea how you guys cover the kids, especially those that may not, I mean, because everybody's not on the same playing field economically. Mm -hmm. And just Mm -hmm. being able to meet the needs of everybody on the team, I think is really impressive. And it's a testament not just to the staff, but it's also a testament to the parents, because I've talked to several parents who have said, yeah, you know, we try to chip in where we can to help out where we can, because, you know, everybody's, again, not on the same playing field. And and so it is an opportunity. And I, I I don't want that to be lost on our audience that it's not just about Friday night and it's not just about football. There's a lot more to it. And you really are breeding these young men and setting them up for success long term so that, you know, we can look back 10 or 15 years from now and see how great they are. And I, you know, I even look at some of the players that have have come, have matriculated through Fayetteville's program, Brandon Allen, Dre Greenlaw, of course. And and I was so sad for him when he when he hurt himself uh, during the, um, the, the game. And I've had a chance to meet with him several times. And you know, several players that have come out of this program specifically that have had success at a, at a very high level. And not every kid is going to experience that, but every kid has the opportunity to set themselves up for success, whether on a playing field or whether at a job, at a, in a career where they can really be the best version of themselves. And a lot of that is born out of their experience there on the football field. You know, absolutely. And, I, and one of the things that we kind of noticed when I when I first came here was there wasn't, you know, there was a sense of family that was kind of missing. So you'll see all of our coaches and our kids and, you know, everybody's wearing a shirt and that says family across it and the eyes of one. And we talk a lot about it every day. We every single day that we break down a drill or weight workout or practice, we all say family. And that's not something that's just on a shirt, like some people say, but that's wholeheartedly what we believe in. We try to demonstrate that in everything that we do. And sometimes it's too, you know, there's, it's too much. This place is really, really big. And some people say, well, Coach Dick, you let everybody in too far. And I was, no, not really. You know, you can think it's too far, but, you know, it, it's as I tell you and I tell everybody else, this is your program just as much as it is mine. We just get to coach your kid. That's the only difference. You know, you guys, you guys are a part of the program. And the way that we try to demonstrate that is, you know, one of the th- biggest things that people got put on social media this year was there was a couple of news reporters and sports writers within the area that, they asked me, what are we going to do that's kind of different? And I said, we're going to feed every single kid on Thanksgiving morning. Mm-hmm. 
in our program and every single family member that shows up. And they said, there's no way you're going to do that. And I said, there's absolutely no way we're going to do it and we'll do it. And, you know, it's grown to be a really big event for us. I think this year was right over, we fed right over 300 people. And I put the, the amount of eggs and biscuits and all that stuff that, that our family members cooked, not coaches, that our community members cooked. And we had some unbelievable support, you know, that enabled us to do that at a record rate as far as, you know, the things that we're able to cook. And, you know, and like you mentioned, there's kids of, that have different opportunities when they get to our program. And, you know, and right now, my favorite event that we do in our program is right about fall. We know we do it. We do a fundraiser to where if we didn't have or we didn't do that fundraiser, there'd be about 25 or 30 kids that wouldn't go with a Christmas present just, you know, or not have the equal opportunity as everybody else. And we take that money and strictly go buy those kids Christmas presents and, and donate it to them. And, it, you know, it's it's something that's that's really, really awesome when you get to experience that in person and be a part of that just because, as you mentioned, everybody comes from different back, backgrounds and ethnicities and, and ways of life and how they get here. But when they walk through that door, they're ours. And that's all that matters. Yeah. You know, that's what I tell them all the time. You guys, when you guys go play on a Friday night, what's the front of your jersey say? It says Bulldogs. It doesn't say anything else. It doesn't say, <laughs> you know, how much you make, how much they make, where they're from, how they got here or anything like that. You're all common. You're all teammates. So that's what we want to drive home. And so that it's an awesome experience to go be able to deliver those things. And our booster club and our community do an outstanding job of of just being generous and being able to give support to those kids, you know, in a way that necessarily wouldn't, wouldn't get everything that they need. And when I say need is need just some of those basic, basic things that they need, whether it gets cold or it gets hot or whatever it is, they, they got an opportunity to go succeed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that. I'm here for all of that. And I would certainly encourage anyone that's listening that wants to maybe support the Fayetteville high school football program. There are many options and ways to do that. There is a foundation where you can be a sponsor for the Fayetteville High School football program. There's actually even a digital sign out on I-49 that if you, if you, you advertise on that sign, I believe a good portion of the proceeds goes back to the Fayetteville High School Football Foundation. So is that correct? Or, it does. Yeah. It goes to our booster, booster club, club, which then yeah. it'll, be, it'll be used to serve those kids. Yeah. Um, we buy anything, like I said, any, anything from meals to Christmas presents, you know, anything that those kids need that would – that they don't have, yeah. honestly, you know, just to give them a better opportunity to get, you know, approach a day and go win it for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, coach, as we wind up, and I mean, of course, everybody and their mother is asking you this question, how are you going to run this thing back <laughs> this, this next <laughs> season? I mean, I know you've got to be thinking, and I mean, of course, you should take some downtime and you should recharge, which you certainly earned and deserve. But if I know or understand the type of person that you are, you're already thinking about tomorrow and, you know, what's going to happen with the team. How are you processing that? You know, when you look at a school like this size and this capacity, you know, one thing that you learn is you have a lot of kids. You have a lot of great kids. You have a lot of opportunities. And I think one of the things that we've done better as a staff since we've been here is we've, we've done a great job of developing kids and really as they've come throughout our program, whether they're freshmen, sophomores or juniors, and they've grown each year. I mean, I think that's really helped us, whether that's been in the weight room, whether that's been sp with specific instruction that we've used out on the practice field or in the film room, or like, even if I mentioned that leadership class and that we do. So I, we have seen a lot of growth that's happened within our kids. And with that, what you have is you, you have a lot of kids, number one, that I think when you present them with an opportunity, they grasp that opportunity, they learn and they're like, OK, I don't you know, I always want to get better from this point to the next point and from the next point to that point. And so. We really divide our year up into three, three to four different phases. You know, we're, we're kind of in phase one right now where we're in the off season. I tell the kids, that like, kind of give them the analogy of, of working with a puzzle, which some people work with puzzles, some don't. So, like, right now, we're really trying to – we've got all of our edge pieces around the puzzle. And we're trying to say, okay, we've got our edge pieces around. And then we'll start working from the outside in internally trying to, you know, take everybody and say, okay, well, where's this person fit? Where's this person fit? And then how does – and then when you get truly inside of it, how does everybody really help our team in the, in the middle? So that's kind of how we approach it. So we're, we're in phase one. Phase two will be our skills practices, which will start when we get back from spring break. Phase three will be spring ball. And then really, obviously, phase four will be summer and that fall camp leading up into that first game. But we've got a lot of great kids. We're going to have another huge senior class. I think we'll have right around 40 seniors, which last year we had 38 or 39. And we've got a lot of experience that that's going to be back and a lot of kids that played and got a lot of experience. And then a lot of kids that played in JV that we've seen really grow in the off season. So, you know, I, I don't ever say, Hey, we're going to go out and win a state championship or we're going to go out and do this. You know, I would expect us to be competitive just like we were, just like we have been. And if we do, 
continue to do things the right way, then we'll have an opportunity to go have a really great year. And we sh- I think we should have a great year just from the support and the community and everybody else that like, like we've discussed here, you know, we're, we're in a great system with, with great support that gives our kids a great opportunity to go have a lot of fun and, you know, be very successful in athletics, but also in that school building. Yeah. Well put, well put. Well, I certainly appreciate you as I know all the parents do and, you know, all the residents of Fayetteville for the hard work that you and your staff have put in to these young men. And I mean, we are, we're growing, you know, the future leaders, right? And these young men are learning at a young age what it means to be in the arena. So I want to mm-hmm. thank you personally for doing that. And I just going to say, hey, you know, we want to continue to root for the Purple Dogs, especially if you're a Fayetteville resident. If you're from another city in Northwest Arkansas, then, <laughs> you know, you should definitely call your your team and, and, and root for them. But because I live in Fayetteville and because Fayetteville has been very good to me from the moment that I got here, I had to rep the Purple Bulldogs and, and have Coach Dick on. And of course, it doesn't hurt that they went 13-0. and 0, So why not talk about the experiences of this past season and what it means for the future? So Coach Casey Dick, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We really, really appreciate your time and effort. And we will certainly be rooting for you guys this fall to see what you can do for this next season coming up in, in 2024. So thank you so much for, for joining us on the podcast. No, absolutely. And I appreciate it. As I tell all the parents, appreciate you guys letting us, number one, coach your kid. And Fayetteville is an awesome place with great support, great community. And we're, we are we are so fortunate to be here and just obviously look forward to the future and all the other kids we get to impact on a daily basis. Absolutely. There you go. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Coach Dick. We'll be sure to put contact information if you want to donate to the Fayetteville High School Bulldogs booster program. I'm sure they'll take your money. There's probably in-kind donations that you can make, but uh, I'm going to support them personally in this upcoming football season. And uh, I would certainly encourage you to do that or do it for whatever football program you're a part of. If you're in Springdale, support Springdale or Harbor. If you're in Rogers, support Rogers High School or Heritage. And if you're in Bentonville, of course, Bentonville or Bentonville West, it doesn't matter. We're still, all of these programs are molding the next generation of leadership in our community. And so that I could think of worse places for you to spend your money. So I would encourage you to do that. So, and again, everything that we talked about today, we'll put in the show notes for this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, and we'll put contact information if you want to reach out to Coach Dick and his staff. And again, we appreciate you listening to this episode. Remember, the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast comes out every Monday, rain or shine. And uh, I want to give a shout out to KUAF because our episodes are featured there every Tuesday on Ozarks at Large, both at 12 noon and at 7 p.m. I'm Randy Wilburn, the host of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast, and we will see you back here next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.